Hello and very warm welcome. Dear students, today I will be talking about the origin of angiosperms. Angiosperms represent one of the greatest terrestrial radiation. The oldest fossils date back from the early Cretaceous followed by a rise to ecological dominance in many habitats before the end of the Cretaceous. Darwin referred to the origin of angiosperms as abominable mystery. He was referring to the dreadful lack of fossil evidence that would help link angiosperms to gymnosperms, seed ferns or other extant or extinct groups. The lack of fossils was attributed to the thought that angiosperms arose in dry upland areas that were not optimal for fossilization. Since Darwin's time, many advances have been made, including new fossils and lots of molecular data aimed at their mystery. Many theories and hypotheses have been proposed from time to time and most of them have revolved around two basic theories which include the unantial theory and pseudantial theory. Now, let us discuss the unantial theory first. It is also known as anthostrobilus theory. The unantial theory was proposed by Arbor and Parkin in 1907. According to this theory, the angiosperm flower is interpreted as being derived from an unbranched bisexual strobilus bearing spirally arranged ovules and pollen organs, similar to the hermaphrodite reproductive structures of some extinct bintitian gymnosperms. The carpal is thus regarded as a modified megasporophyll. The bisexual flower of magnoliales has been considered to have evolved from such a structure. Now, let us discuss the pseudantial theory. Commonly associated with the Anglerian school, the theory was first proposed by Wettstein in 1907. According to this theory, Wind pollinated cone bearing naked seed plants may be the ancestors of angiosperms. Angler and others concluded that angiosperms evolved from conifers, neotophytes, and certain catkin bearing angiosperms, such as the forerunners of Cassiorhina equistifolia. The existing theories and hypotheses about the origin of angiosperms include anthocomb theory. This theory is a modified version of the pseudantial theory and was proposed by Neumayer in 1924 and strongly advocated by B. Hughes. According to this theory, the angiosperm flower has several separate origins that the org angiosperms are polyphyletic in origin. In most magnolidae and their dicotyledonous derivatives, they are modified plural axial system that originated from the neotopsids via the pipe rails, whereas the modification of an originally uniaxial system gave rise to flowers of chloranthesi. Meuse in 1963 postulated a separate origin of monocotyledons from the fossil order pentoxyleles through the monocot order pandanales. Now, let us discuss anthophyte hypothesis. In 1986, Dunoy and Doily proposed that flowering plants were derived from neotophytes. The anthophyte hypothesis was developed further in later years. However, after reconsidering incongruent molecular phylogenetic and morphological data, the anthophyte hypothesis was rejected by the authors in 2000. Another theory is woody magnolid theory. 
Several theories propose that modern flowering plants evolved from magnolia like species having strobiloid flowers with many world parts not unlike Benetitalians. Another theory is paleo herb theory or paleo herb hypothesis. According to Taylor and Hickey in 1992, flowering plants evolved from herbaceous forms possessing ovules and pollen bearing organs that combined over time producing modern flowers. The term paleo herb was first used by Donoy and Doily in 1989 for a group of derivatives of magnolidae having anomocytic stomata two worlds of perianth and trimerous flowers including Lactoridaceae, Aristolochiaceae, Cabombaceae, Piperales, Nymphaceae and Monocots. Another theory is Coloranthoid hypothesis. This hypothesis suggests that Flowering plants evolved from Chloranthoid ancestors not unlike the modern angiosperm family Chloranthesi. Arguments present by arguments presented by Stussy in 2004 in favor of Leroy's proposal include reports of data from molecular systematics that place hidiosimum in a clade basal to other extant angiosperms. Multiple origin hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, the flowering plants evolved from multiple unrelated seed plant lineages. The polyphyletic, polychromic, polytopic hypothesis and Nair's triphyletic theory are best placed in these hypotheses. Another theory is Gonophil theory. Ronald Melville was the main proponent of the Gonophil theory according to which the flowering plants evolved from glossopterids of Mesozoic Gondwana. Together with Volt Zillian conifers, Gygnopterids and glossopterids are probably the best known fossil seed plant groups of arid sparsely vegetated pangean biomes of Permian period. Of the aforementioned plants at least presently known only conifers and some glossopterids persisted beyond the Permo Triassic extinction event that occurred 251 million years ago. Another important hypothesis is seed fern hypothesis. Several differing seed fern hypotheses promulgated by American, Asian and European paleobotanists suggest an origin of flowering plants from Paleozoic and Mesozoic gymnosperm seed fern stock. Research findings that shed light on the origin of flowering plants from Teridosperms include doily and frolich. Doily and others suggest that the cupule forming Catonia or other as yet unstudied seed ferns were the ancestors of angiosperms. However, more work is needed to understand the anatomy of ovules and fruit bearing radishes of seed ferns or to ascertain homology with functionally equivalent features of the unripened seeds, carpels and fruits of angiosperms. Another hypothesis is biome and paleogeographically specific hypothesis. Interestingly, both on upland hypothesis and coastal hypothesis were proposed to explain topographical centers of origin and radiation of first flowering plants. According to Stebbins, alpine biomes of northern latitudes might have been of center of early radiation of the angiosperm. A similar idea 
The Eastern Asian Center hypothesis was put forth by Sun et al. in 2001. Based on the recovery and study of fossil pollen casings recovered from the deep sea drill holes, Hocholi and Fist Burkhardt in 2004 suggested that early flowering plants might have evolved in a boreal cradle. Field et al. based their conclusive ideas on early angiosperm ecology from the phylogenetically robust Anita clade. However, despite possibly wide agreement among certain workers that Amborelaceae and Hydatilaceae are basal or angiosperms, Amborella trichopoda is almost certainly not an early flowering plant. Developmentally and genetically based theories. Ideas on the origin of angiosperms based on evidence from the study of ontogeny of seed plants include Asama's growth retardation theory, Mayan's gamoheterotrophic hypothesis, Froelich and Parker's mostly male theory and Becker and Thiessen's out of male and out of female hypothesis. The out of male and out of female hypothesis are based on a floral homeotic protein quartet model and evolutionary development of pollen bearing and ovule organs of cone axis. Now, unifying theories. Bonafide theories fall into this category. Stussy's transitional combinational theory, which draws on information from several scientific disciplines, in the, is the most up to date theory in this category. Stussy proposes that carpels evolved first, followed by double fertilization and then by flowers slowly or many millions of years, perhaps more than 100 million. Now, let us analyze the recent trends in the studies on origin of angiosperms. Through contributions from paleobotany, phylogenetics, classical developmental biology and modern developmental genetics, tremendous progress has recently been made in elucidating the origin and diversification of the angiosperms. Fossils have contributed a lot. Paleobotany has at least three crucial roles to play in resolving the origin and early diversification of flowering plants and addressing the following questions, which include what lineage is ancestral to the angiosperms? What were the first angiosperms and how have characters evolved? Fossil discoveries and analysis of existing data have made significant contributions to our understanding of the possible ancestors of flowering plants as well as to the early diversification of angiosperms. Third question is, when did the major clades of angiosperms diversify on the basis of fossil calibrations and molecular based methods? Now, let us discuss ancestors of flowering plants. The closest relatives of angiosperms remain a mystery. Phylogenetic analysis of morphological features conducted in 1980 suggest that netials were the closest living relatives of angiosperms. Cladistic analysis of extant and fossil taxa recovered a clade of bintiteals, pentoxyleals, Neetales and angiosperms. Doyle and Donoy in 1986 named this clade the anthophytes in reference to the flower like reproductive structures in all members. The anthophyte hypothesis that angiosperms belong to this clade and are possibly sister to the neetophytes concomitantly had a profound effect on views of the evolution of the angiosperms. Molecular phylogenetic studies, however, later revealed that neetials are not the sister groups to the angiosperms, but the extant gymnosperms form a clade with neetials most likely associated with conifers. 
the demise of the anthophyte hypothesis profoundly altered views of angiosperm origins accompanying this demise is a need for alternatives. If no extant gymnosperm is sister to angiosperms, what fossil lineages if any are closely related to flowering plants? Dwyley in 2001 and Soltis et al in 2005 concluded a series of analysis of morphological and molecular data sets involving extant taxa as well as fossils to reassess the closest relatives of the angiosperms. These analyses yielded similar results and revealed a revised anthophyte clade. In this clade, Catonia is sister to the angiosperms followed by Benetitials, Pentoxylon and Glossopterids. Hence, fossils such as Catonia and Benetitials may be the closest relatives of angiosperms. However, the recent discovery that neotophytes and bentitials share features suggests that further attention be given to circumscribing and evaluating a revised anthophyte clade. Although these analyses are useful, one of the biggest remaining challenges facing evolutionary biologists is ascertaining the fossil lineages that represent the closest relatives of angiosperms. Do catonials and bentitials actually represent these lineages? Are there key fossil links that remain to be discovered? The earliest angiosperms, which are fossils, there are two highly divergent views on the general habit of the earliest angiosperms, woody and terrestrial or herbaceous and aquatic. This has actually been a long standing debate. The hypothesis that the earliest angiosperms were woody is supported by the fact that the most basal angiosperms are woody and all gymnosperms are woody as well as the fossil lineages that are considered most closely related to angiosperms for example, catonials and bentitials. Amborilla the sister to all other living angiosperms is woody as are members of Austrobileals, another early branching lineage of living angiosperms. However, an aquatic origin of angiosperms is supported by the fact that several of the earliest known fossil angiosperms were aquatic. Archifractus represent perhaps the oldest most complete angiosperm fossil. It is estimated to be approximately 115 to 125 million years old. On the basics of morphology, it clearly was aquatic. The phylogenetic placement of the fossil Archifractus as sister to all extant angiosperms plus the near basal phylogenetic position of extant nymphials lent support to the view that the aquatic habit arose early in angiosperms and that perhaps the earliest angiosperms were aquatic. However, later analyses questioned the placement of Archifractus as sister to all extant angiosperms. Some analyses of Friss et al placed Archifractus with water lilies. The recent discovery that Hydrotiliaceae are part of water lily clade and hence a new branch near the base of the angiosperms greatly increases the morphological diversity encompassed by the nymphials clade. This finding raised the possibility that nymphials were once much more diverse and could have encompassed Archifractus as well as other now extinct lineages. Hence, it now seems prudent to keep an open mind regarding the placement of Archifractus. It represents well the difficulty in placing fossil lineages that are morphologically distinct with no clear cynomorphies with extant taxa. Another early angiosperm fossil was considered a possible water lily related to, related to by Friss in 2001. 
this fossil is debated at approximately 125 to 115 million years old and was used as evidence to support the antiquity of the Nymphaeal's lineage. This putative ancient water lily fossil is therefore extremely important in discussions of the diversification of Nymphaeals as well as their angiosperms. A phylogenetic analysis using the morphological data set of Les et al. in 1999 for extant Nymphaeals placed the fossil as sister to Nymphaeals synapomorphies with extant Nymphaeals include a syncarpus gynoecium, a perigynous or epigynous perianth and a central protrusion of the floral axis between the carpals. However, neither of the last two characters is found consistently throughout Nymphaeals. The unnamed fossil exhibits features shared by both Nymphaeals and Elysium which belongs to Austrobileals and occurs in a site with abundant fossil seeds attributed to Elysiates. The recent floral analysis and dating experiment of Yo et al. in 2005 raised the possibility that the unnamed fossil of Friss et al. may have actually been part of an ancient assemblage that included Nymphaeals and Austrobileals. With this, we conclude the, this portion of the topic origin of angiosperms, in which we have studied the various theories that have been proposed from time to time in elucidating the origin of angiosperms. We also studied some of the recent advances that have been made in resolving the picture of origin of angiosperms. In our next topic, we will seek support from phylogenetics in resolving the big picture of origin of angiosperms. We will see also the major windows of opportunity in the origin of angiosperms. Thank you.